HPE is a sponsor of our coverage from OpenStack in Barcelona. Learn more about HPE Healy and the hybrid cloud and what it all means for the enterprise customer at hpe.com. Learn more again at hpe.com. Hey, it's Alex Williams with the Newstack. I would like you guys to introduce yourselves Please, and we'll, then we'll just get started with our conversation. Sure. My name is Lisa Marie Amphi. I'm with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I am, but my open store, my open stack. Uh, job is I run the San Francisco Bay Area user community, which is the world's largest OpenStack user community with almost 6,000 members. Uh, I run a bi-weekly meetup in, in the San Francisco Bay Area and I've been involved in OpenStack for almost all of OpenStack's existence. Awesome. Uh, my name is Ildiko Vancha. I recently joined the OpenStack Foundation. I used to work for Ericsson, so I have a small NFE background. Within the foundation, I'm the ecosystem technical lead, which focuses on to keep our uh, continuously growing ecosystem healthy. Uh, so we are trying to help uh, all the companies who are, who are joining us and uh, who are participating in the community to be successful, to embrace open source, and I'm kind of glad to see uh, diversity in technology, uh, finally, within OpenStack, uh, because we are talking about diversity in various aspects. And with having uh, NFE and Telecom more and more present, uh, now we arrive to the technology part as well. So the developer community is more and more open, and we just had a demonstration, a live demonstration of an interrupted phone call on the keynote stage on Tuesday, which went really, really well, and uh, people are really excited about it. So we, we are kind of uh, trying to demonstrate that OpenStack is capable of uh, being um, the base of, of the telecom systems, which we all know that they are trying to fulfill really, really strict requirements. So I think it, 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 be, it will be a, a really interesting period because of containers, because of telecom, because of NFE, so how all these things can come together because they are not separate anymore and, and OpenStack is not about just enterprise and data centers anymore. So I'm interested to see that how the mixture will... will yeah, that's in interesting. The, 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 the telco story has is starting to change, isn't it? I mean, we're starting to see more adoption of container technologies in the telco community. But how do you, you know, how do you help these companies who have not really been in the open source, open source world, how do you help them adapt? Like what are some of the things that you're doing to help a telco kind of adapt to a, a different kind of a culture where the development's a lot more out of the open and there's more, much more transparency? Yeah, so uh, within the foundation we just started to work on a kind of a training program for companies uh, to, to show them how open source works and uh, how this whole uh, ecosystem collaborates with each other, how to, how to be more open without uh, giving out all their, all their patents or, and, uh, and all the things that they, they used to uh, develop in a proprietary manner. Um, so we are trying to educate a little bit and uh, trying to accelerate this, this mindset and cultural and also organizational change uh, that is really required for these companies to, to be successful in open source, not just in open stack. Yeah. The nice thing about it at the summit, it's not just a design summit anymore and it's not just for developers. So here at the summit we have a lot of operators oh, yeah. and having the ops people here is helping both the developers and the customers. You know, so that knowledge transfer that you're talking about, the people that are actually there who are doing this, you know, as everybody's moving to more of a DevOps cycle, you know, the onus is not just on the admins anymore, and um, so it's it's less of a developer-focused conference than it used to be. We still do have the design summit, but I think those conversations between those layers are happening. There's so many vendors here, there's so many customers. There are some changes ongoing. For example, we are changing the event format uh, of the summit. Right. So uh, in parallel with the conference, uh, we will not have a design summit anymore, but we will have a forum 
and uh, as the name indicates it will be something that will focus more on bringing all the users operators and the developers in one room and let them talk so that we can get the feedback and then we can get even even maybe to the next step of, uh, of how to solve problems how to improve things how to evolve things further so um, hopefully that will really accelerate this, this process um, and on the other hand we are also focusing more on the uh, active user community and uh, and the working groups uh, that we have around so that they can collaborate closer uh, with the developers than, than they used to do that. Okay, so, so as I understand, the, the, we have the design, this is exactly the last design summit we'll actually have here. And next year we'll see, a, it's like a project summit, is that what they're called? It's where like the developers, there'll be a conference for the developers in February, yes. and then the forum will be in May. Is that how it was working? Yes, yeah, so in February we will have the first uh, project team gathering, PTG, uh, this is how we call it, and uh, that will be really the place for, for the project teams and active developers to come together and deal with the deeper technical issues. And uh, what will happen in May is more like a uh, forward-looking uh, activity uh, and also well, backward and also forward-looking activity in the sense of um, we will have the, the next release uh, out uh, in February, so um, it'll um, it's going to give time to, to, the, to the users and operators to really try to test it and, uh, and try to give feedback uh, and not for, you know, to release this back. But, but for the latest one, and that should really help much uh, with improving uh, the code base and, and how the teams are working. So that speaks then to, I think, in the, the larger role that users will actually have in the community, doesn't it? the active user community efforts that are happening and they and this is the first conference because that's the category I fall into as, as community architect and a meetup organizer and also somebody who in my own company in Hewlett Packard is, is very passionate about getting more open source, getting more of our technology open sourced, you know, getting more community development, involving communities um, and uh, you know defaulting to open anywhere that we can and so at this conference it's the first time that we have on our badges a, a, a symbol for the AUC, for the active user contributors and there's a lot of work that goes into this OpenStack cloud computing that isn't just coding that isn't and as we have more customer adoption that even that grows you know and so the user community uh, they're not all developers they don't all they're not all core contributors they don't all just write the technology that goes into the next version yeah. there's a maybe bunch document of other pieces yeah. Yeah. to the puzzle yeah, exactly. it, is, it is very important uh, um, we we used we used to say and we we, we still uh, say that we need more people uh, persons around. So uh, like like the activities, what what Lisa is doing is very important uh, because we we just cannot improve, uh, for example, communication enough and and make enough connections. So like organizing these uh, different size user groups uh, in local areas also also help much. Uh, to uh, move forward with, with both feedback and, and the implementation activities. So will that, will this be turtles all the way down? I mean, will there be like, so we'll have a design, now we have a design summit, then you know, next year we'll have a developer event and a forum event. Will there be a similar, uh, you know, will be a similar organization down to the local level where you'll have, you know, developer and, and, and forum kind of communities that will meet? Different in different contexts, or is that going to be, or is it, or is the community still need to really grow a lot more, be able to separate it down at that local level? Well, I think it's different in different areas. I think we've already started to see a little bit of that happen with the OpenStack days that are global. Uh -huh. They're getting more and more popular, and they're taking some of the pressure off the summit to be all things to all people. Um, and so you can really, and most of those are just one day or maybe half a day. Some of them were two days um, in more popular areas. And, and that's, I think, where we're really bringing this to the local areas. It, those are great recruiting grounds. Those are great thing, you know, things to use to grow your community. And 
so far they've been a mix of kind of high level you know you, you have vendor yeah. vendors doing keynotes and things like that but you also have um, workshops and hands-on things and you, we can get very technical and we did a workshop in Seattle about open stack on containers it was very very popular and we did a hands-on no demo here's how you run kubernetes on it was, it was great so I think you're seeing both of those things happening so uh, from you know so that that actually shows a kind of a distinction trying to say all right we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're gonna put out a release and then we're gonna have some time to review it and then when the forum comes around we'll be able to have discussions about that right so is that gonna change at all how the projects are managed at all well will we see more will that you know affect kind of the the cycles for how you know, the, the projects operate so if, if we're going to be having you know more of a kind of a DMARC you know more of a, almost like a more collaboration you know around the, the new releases will that be a, will that affect the projects in any way and how they're managed I, I would say that that uh, maybe we are just putting putting things to the right place in the sense of when uh, the different kind of discussions are happening like for example when when we can gather better and uh, kind of newest feedback uh, regarding the uh, just um, introduced releases for example and um, I don't think that at least not immediately that it would it would change how the project teams are operating but maybe it will just be easier to operate in a way how how they are trying to do it today because for example now um, with the design summit is happening just a few weeks after after the release everyone just taking a breath try to prepare uh, the discussions that are happening now we will try to uh, make them them happen during the next cycle uh, but also the discussions are still more forward-looking so uh, why not reorganize these things a little bit so that the, these forums support more the process that we are having. We'll still be doing the, the mid-cycles and oh, yeah. you know, I, I think you'll see the flow still working as, as it always has been um, and so I don't anticipate this affecting how the projects are being governed and or uh, rolled out. I mean I think there's other things that affect the projects even more. Um, you know. It, there's, the governance is changing all the time, and that doesn't have anything to do with how we're doing the the summit, right? I mean, we have you know, Big Ten changed a lot of things, right? And and so there's now been kind of different opinions about that, and, and how we should pull back from that, or or, or go even some people will go further forward and or what it, what happens when you have one corporation with too many contributors and so there's it's influencing a, a project too heavily or there's a lot of discussions and and what should even be a project because it's you know it can be just the wild wild west or how much do we contain that and you know so I think those things affect how these projects are being rolled out a little bit more than just the design yeah. summit versus forum. Yeah, I just wondered <laughs> that's a symbol of how I mean because if we're trying to get more collaboration right and I have one of the criticisms I've heard about the projects is that they can be very silent and that you know, and like you know, and as they get siloed, and we, but as the projects get, you know, as open stack gets bigger, there needs to be more horizontal work being done. Thing you know, on projects as that we're seeing with things like Oslo, for example. Yeah, and the popular project that is happening because you have contributors from all over the world that want to get involved, and you have contributors from different companies, and a lot more diversity in those projects. Um, you know, some of the smaller ones. Maybe that doesn't happen as as much, but I think as OpenStack grows and is is getting more global, which we are seeing, I think a lot of that will just sort of naturally happen. So m moving actually to kind of the topic of diversity, then you know, in terms of of, of OpenStack, the, 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 the diversity still, you know, is, it is reflective of the tech industry, you know, very much so. Like, uh, um, I mean, we were looking at some statistics about, you know, uh, the number of. Uh, Women in open stack. It's pre I don't know what the exact numbers are. I saw ten percent maybe, but is it lower? Is it higher? Um, I suppose it may, depends on what you mean by in open stack. Or who are engineers and who are uh, developers? So actual developers and core contributors. Do you know what the number is? I don't know the exact number. Yeah, yeah, I think we got up to twelve at one point. I thought, but. Um, but yeah, no, they're not good. The numbers right. are, are not where we want them to be. I mean, women are fifty percent, right. more than fifty percent of the population. Right. Um, so I'd love to, I'd love to, uh, the random sample to reflect exactly what, the, what right. the real community looks like. In other areas, in the um, in the non-coding, not the ATC, but in the AUC, the active user contributors and community, you, I think we have more women right. there. Um, just for the nature of, of our jobs, a little bit as right. well, because again, it reflects, you know, what 
what the corporations look like also. But we, we would like to get those numbers way, way better. So if you were going to write a prescription, if you could write a prescription for to get that number to 50%, what would be the, some of the things you'd, you'd recommend? What would be that prescription that you'd write? We have whole talks on this, um, so we could answer this question for, for an hour. But um, there's, you know, there's lots of things you can tacti tactically do. Obviously, we need to get the, the pipeline and the funnel more full. But it's it's not just a pipeline problem. I mean, we, you know, we could have we could fill every many panels with all women if we wanted to. And you know, th there are women out there in OpenStack who are contributing and who want to do more things. And so it's more of an active ep effort to showcase, you know, what the face. Of, of OpenStack should look like and what we want it to look like and have that represent. Um, also, culture is a, is a big thing, so the conversations that are happening in the IRC are quite frankly not always pleasant if you're a woman and they've they've shied, uh, you know, they've pushed a lot of really good women away, you know, when you don't feel How so? like is a it value. a environment or it, what is it? It can be, we were just talking about gender here, I mean diversity yeah. means a lot of things, so I can, you know, yeah. there's a lot yeah. of different areas yeah. where you go with that, yeah. but, um, but yeah, it's, it's male dominated and the conversations can tend to be yeah. quite, you know, reflective of that. Um, and I think sometimes people just forget, you know, to, that there's, that, that there are women on in the meeting as well and and so that that's one thing i would like to see uh, cleaned up a little bit the, the culture um you know cultural awareness though this is again with every with every corporation oh, yeah. um but uh, and then just you know have a more ptls that are women i mean let's just you know, there are definitely credible women out there that are qualified so let's pick one let's let's lend some credibility you know i did a whole diversity talk on credibility lending um and giving women access to that you know so maybe you have to work a little harder because all your friends might be male so let's let's just take a little more time and and because it will be the right person and that women will be super qualified, probably overqualified given what she's had to do to get that far in her career. Exactly. Um, so, the, you know, all, all those things, just a little bit more of an effort. So there's this, but there's also a structure and a process that is needed for that, isn't there? So like, so, so those, so you, so those management changes can be made in a manner that allow, you know, for more diversity. Yeah, but, and so with pull requests, you don't always know where your pull request is coming from. So that's another area where things can be really, really siloed. Why don't you just start reviewing pull requests that don't come from your corporation or that don't come from re your your own niche? Because some of those pull requests that you may be reviewing and, and accepting might come from a woman. You right. Know, you don't know. So there's a lot of areas where where you can you know we can we can be shy and we, we're not always like out there in, in the limelight. So mentoring is a big thing too. Sometimes it's just uh, that contact and you know when. When, when we did the Women of OpenStack scholarship program at, at Hewlett Packard, what we realized is you can't just throw money at, at someone. It's not it's not a money problem in right. a lot of cases. It's that access and it's that you know comfort level. And you know if you walk in a room and nobody looks like you and, and the conversation has nothing to do with you and in fact it's quite offensive, the, you're going to walk out of that room. So women were coming and not staying. And and same with on IRC. So we're we're seeing this all over. So how do you retain? So you make that that connection and when I'm running a meetup if I see a woman you know that, I, that hasn't come before you know comes for the first time I will go immediately and, and introduce myself to her and um, you know find out what projects she likes to work on and I probably know the PTL and make that connection even if they're not in the room that day but if they're somewhere on IRC or you know somehow make sure that she gets involved and has somebody to walk her through her first week two weeks month in OpenStack and and actively start contributing and feeling comfortable with it and it's just that foot in the door kind of thing and then once you get over there then you know we get some of our best contributions from from these women that's interesting that's an interesting kind of point of view how about at the foundation level? What are, you know, what are some of those prescriptions you're thinking about? Uh, well, we we are supporting the the women of OpenStack group and uh, also uh, travel program, mentoring programs, outreachy. So we are trying to focus more on to. Uh, let's say open the door uh, and give all the support to, to women both who would like to join and uh, both those women who, who are working on uh, making this environment more pleasant for, for women. Um, I'm also happy to say that, that for example, uh, uh, within two, these two days, uh, I think we had women on stage for almost all technical demos. 
uh, this time, which is pretty amazing. And we had well <laughs> we had a nice representation of, of women on, on stage. So I think we are also trying to focus on showing a, a good example to women. Uh, because I wouldn't say that, that the situation would be that terribly bad regarding, you know, the base environment like the IRC discussions and things like that. Uh, but maybe it's more like, you know, a, a common thinking that if it's an open source environment, then it must be like that because because we all know that, that there are more rough and less rough environments, but we all know the bad examples that are just kind of around. So we would like to show more that, that how good experience it is to be part of a community. And um, we are also um, having um, upstream trainings for, for as, a, as contribution trainings and working together with the women of OpenStack group uh, to have mentors. So, so we had several uh, women in the room just to kind of really show uh, all those, uh, all those uh, female students who are coming that, that they are not the only one and, and uh, it's, it's not just not impossible but, but once they can be really on the other side and help others to, to learn and come and be part of the community. So we are kind of trying to show uh, equality. Uh, the mentor program is great. They, they've done a fantastic job, and that's, that's the point I was making earlier. You know, it's it's, it's not just funding; it's, it's that the mentoring is absolutely key in order to, to, yeah. to make women feel comfortable to train and to and for retention. They've done a great job lately with the mentoring program. Well, terrific. Well, I'd like to thank you both for taking some time to talk today. And, you know, here at OpenStack in Barcelona, and look forward to talking again in the year ahead. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for asking the important questions. Great, thank you. Thank you. HPE is a sponsor of our coverage from OpenStack in Barcelona. Learn more about HPE Healy and the hybrid cloud and what it all means for the enterprise customer at hpe.com. Learn more again at hpe.com.